With respect to the webbing that we use in our design, if you look back at some of our older buildings, we used a solid round bar webbing that was centrally located on the cord of the truss. We've evolved our webbing design to a U-channel shaped web, and what that allows us to do is connect the web to the cord and very effectively we can trim the end of that web so that it kind of cups or conforms to the cord and spreads out the connection over the cord. It gives us a more efficient transfer of load between the cord and the web. It also allows us to get up to three inches of welding around the end of that web get a very solid connection between the web and cord. That web being an open section is very efficient for hot dip galvanizing because the galvanizing can access all sides of the web and get a very good coating in there. So that sets it up for a long life in the field. The way that that web conforms to the cord gives us a more effective load transfer than what we saw in our older designs in the round bar webbing. The design first started out with a flat plate coupling used a multitude of fasteners to transfer load between truss sections. Those fasteners were displaced from the cord a little bit. That was a convenient geometry for the design. It was a very common approach to this sort of building at the time. But we've since evolved and we've innovated and created what we call our compression coupler. Our compression coupling is located directly on the center line of those cords and it uses two fasteners directly in the load path between those cords. And what that does is it very efficiently transfers the load between the cords in adjacent sections of the building. So it provides a very efficient transfer of load between those sections of the truss. If you look back at some of our older buildings, they were predominantly located at the lower core of the building. They used a, a saddle style connection to provide rotational restraint to the truss. We've evolved our purling design. We've relocated it from its position at the lower cord up into the middle of the truss. And at that location, it's mounted to some fixed purlin brackets. And those purlin brackets are rigidly connected to both the inside and outside cord. What that allows the purlin to do is be more effective in maintaining the truss in its plane. It's more effective at providing rotational restraint to that truss. And that truss really gains its strength when it's held in plane. So the whole system works more efficiently together. Through all the learning that we got evolving our CC and HT designs, improving our purlin design, our coupling designs, and being efficient in the use of the materials, that really gave us the fundamental understanding of how these buildings work, gave us a good basis for the engineering of this type of structure, and that really laid the groundwork for us to develop our VP line. This is a much larger line of buildings, and the amount of materials that go into them is much greater, so the efficiency that we're able to bake into the design, based on everything we've learned on our CC and HT line, has really paid dividends in our VP structures.